All right, we're going to take a look at some health news now, Marissa. Thanks very much. As we wrap up Heart Health Month by focusing on a disease that's impacting more women than men, especially younger women. MedStar Health cardiologist uh, Dr. Uh, Heder Hashem is here now to explain CMD. First of all, doctor, thanks for joining us today. I do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. CMD, what is it? So it's the, um, it stands for coronary microvascular dysfunction. Um, it's a condition or it's a disease that we tried to understood for many years, for many decades. Uh, we called it the chest pain syndrome X when we didn't know the answer. It's technically a disease that affects the small capillaries, the small arteries of the heart. Um, for years, we were interested in fixing the main highways. For the locals here, mm -hmm. we, we're interested in the Beltway, right. 270, 95. Same but with we the always, body. Exactly. But we always, we knew that there are small streets to your house that we are interested in, but we never understood them well. Um, so for the first time now, we have a better technology, a better diagnostic testing to take us into a dive um, into these small capillaries to understand if they're working properly or not. So this is the type of thing where you know, a lot of people will come in and they say they're experiencing chest pain. You're going to go through initially and you're look at some of the major, I guess, options that it could be, right? And then if you can't diagnose it and you can't diagnose it and then you still can't diagnose it, this is one of the things where in the past you wouldn't have known, right? Now you do. Yeah, 100%. So, so the way th this is mostly applicable, uh, it's obviously applicable for all patients. Um, it's part of research that we are doing. But most applicable now is for patients who had seen a cardiologist, they are complaining of chest pain, they had a stress test, uh, they had a CT scan of, your, of their heart, and then they sometimes end up in a, in a cath lab, like what I do, uh, with an invasive procedure called cardiac catheterization or a coronary angiogram. And even with that, we tell you, all is good, no main blockages, but we didn't tell you what you have, what's mm -hmm. causing your chest pain. This is a second step. This is a, the gold standard end of the tests that will tell you, listen, when you don't have blockages here, you might have a problem there, and this is your treatment for it. So if you discover that somebody does have this, and, and maybe the, the chance of the smaller blockages, how does that help then as far as treatment and lifestyle or whatever it is that might help them in the long run? True. We study this in many trials, um, a, a, a pivotal, a, a, a very important trial called the Cormica trial, which actually tested the fact that giving a diagnosis aids um, uh, predominantly in treatment. So patients seek diagnoses. Patients want to know what's wrong with them before they can take medications. For example, if you come to me and I say, hey, take this pill A, pill B, pill C, and I didn't tell you what you have, you might go home and say, you know what, why am I taking pills? Why am I taking chemicals with, if I don't know what I'm having? So this, giving a diagnosis is part of the treatment, and obviously, Coronary microvascular dysfunction, or CMD, comes in different flavors. And there, for every flavor, there is a specific treatment that's available in the U.S., but now we're targeting uh, each diagnosis. Is this something, the CMD, is it something that, that could grow into something greater, or is it essentially self-contained? Like, if you know somebody has that, you can just specifically treat that. Yeah, so it does not grow to something bigger, but we know it is associated with bad outcomes when we tested uh, normal individuals versus patients with, with uh, coronary microvascular dysfunction. We know that prognosis or the lifespan, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's a bit worse with a um, patient with CMD. So that's why we treat it. So one of the other things that we mentioned is, is that this has, it can predominantly impact women, and in some cases younger women. Is there any reason why? Uh, we don't understand that yet. Uh, completely, to be honest with you. We do know that some hormonal changes could affect the um, uh, vasoreactivity, that's what we call it, which is the way the arteries move and, and response to, um, uh, to changes in blood pressure and exercise. Um, we do have a, a part of that microvascular dysfunction is something called vasospasm, which means that the artery is going to spasm. Um, I, always, I always tell my wife this too, it's, it's mostly you know, the stress of life, could put you into a stress on your heart. So um, uh, that's how we understand the disease now. So just to wrap things up for folks, because you know, a lot of people have chest pain out there or, or might have it at some point, um, this is not the kind of thing that you might diagnose initially, right, if somebody comes in with chest pain, but for people who are out there, talk to your cardiologist, talk to your doctor, and, and if you can't find that initial diagnosis, diagnosis, this is one of those things that you might get on a secondary look. Right? I totally agree. Yeah, pursue it. Don't stop. Be your, be your uh, best advocate. Um, ask your cardiologist about it. Say, listen, there is something um, further, b bigger than my arteries are open. What's causing my problems? Look, search for the reason that's causing your, your problem. That's what we want. We want to get those answers out there awesome. so that we can treat them. Thank you for joining us this morning, Dr. Hashim, cardiologist at MedStar Health. Thank you so very much. There's the information for MedStar on the screen.